all of humankind's ambitions and aspirations, then somewhere near the top, if not at it, would be a Ferrari. A Ferrari is a car, of course, but it's also an objet d'art, an object of desire. It is the perfect synthesis between the technological and the artistic. I'm going to show you how it's made. The foundry is where the big bits of the engine are cast. It's where earth, fire and metal conspire like witches over a cauldron to spawn the trembling heart of the living machine. Ooh, cores. These are the cores, so these are the bits that form the cavities inside the casting. So they're made of sand, but it's sand mixed with a resin that is then hardened. So it's not going to fall apart like a sandcastle when I touch it. And the really weird thing about working in a foundry, and especially if you make the moulds, is you have to think of everything in reverse. That is something that isn't going to be there. This is deburring to take the sharp edges off the core, which has been made in a mould of its own. If you didn't knock these off, they'd be washed away by the aluminium as it came in, and then they'd become what's called an inclusion in the finished casting. That's bad. The core is made up of several pieces that are then stuck together, so you get one core set that simply drops into place in the mould. Lesson in mould deburring done, now it's my turn. The start of this edge, see? Very satisfying. Good. Good. Oh, there's a nasty bit there. You see that edge there? That's all going to be smoothed over. Normally, when I do careful and skilled things like this, the director shouts cut and bodges it. OK, I have control. But for once, they actually let me finish a job properly. That went home, as they say in engineering. But our fault. Here are some the professionals made earlier. I'm going to move on to another key job. A tree of Ferrari key rings. Sand is here. We've got four minutes. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Now we've got about two and a half minutes left before it goes completely hard. And two and a half minutes later... The other half of the mould is a simple lid which has in it the runners and risers, that's where the aluminium goes in and then comes back out again. And we assemble that. We are then ready to pour. Once the moulds are made, the aluminium is poured and left to cool. So let's cut to the unveiling. It's so exciting, this bit. It's still slightly warm. Who would like a Ferrari key ring? There you are. Ferrari key ring. Sadly, I had to give that nice red coat back, which is a shame. But there is one last perk of the job. This is the hallowed tarmac of Ferrari's Fiorano test circuit, and I've been given permission to go around it. So let's do that. Oh, only kidding. Yes, all right, I'll go round in the Ferrari. This is the rather appropriately named Ferrari Roma. Packing a whacking great 612 horsepower and with a top speed of 199 mph, the Roma can do 0 to 60 in just 3.4 seconds. It'll also set you back a mere 170 grand. This is a first world observation, I appreciate that, but driving around in a Ferrari does make you feel bloody good. In some ways, we've arrived at a little bit of a paradox here because the thing that makes the Ferrari so delicious from here is, of course, the engine. And that is the bit of it that is most anachronistic. That's the bit that, supposedly, we're going to say goodbye to very soon. 
But, to be honest, if this Ferrari ends up being entirely electric, I'm not sure I'm going to mind. So much of what makes it a wonderful thing will survive. I'm ready for the new Ferrari.